Hi folks. All right, we are going to go through a whole bunch of constant acceleration equations in this section. Um, but before I give those to you, um, I want to show you a little bit where they come from. Velocity is change in displacement divided by change in time. And acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So the equations that I'm going to give you in the next slide are all derived from these two equations. Now, I'm not going to go through the derivation of each one of the equations. Why? Your book does a really good job of that. And quite frankly, some students love the derivations of equations. And through the years, I've discovered that some are like, let's cut to the chase. I just want to know all the equations I need. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. All of the equations I'm about to give you work for constant acceleration, meaning an acceleration that is going to be the same throughout time. And a classic example of that is going to be gravity. You drop an object as it falls. Acceleration of gravity is steady. But there are things that do not have a constant acceleration. This graph indicates that the rate at which a car accelerates will change slightly depending upon what gear it happens to be in. So when we're faced with a situation like that, we, you and I are going to use our calculations to calculate average acceleration. We're going to average this out over time. In order for us to do instantaneous accelerations, that's going to require a quantity of math that is beyond the scope of this course. So average acceleration or constant acceleration are what we're going to work with. One last thing that you're going to see in these equations, the delta t's are going to change into straight t for time, because with these equations, we're going to make the assumption that the clock starts or the stopwatch starts when the action begins. So here goes. This group is our collection of constant acceleration equations. Um, these are each one of those equation variables defined. So let's read through these to make sure you have them right. And I highly recommend you write these on your formula sheet. Final velocity is original velocity plus acceleration times time. Final velocity squared is original velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. Displacement equals original displacement plus original velocity times time plus 1 half acceleration, and time, just that variable time, is squared. Displacement is going to be the average velocity. Final plus original divided by 2 is going to give us our average times time. And velocity is change in displacement over time. Now this top group of equations are all useful when we are describing accelerated motion. When we are describing constant motion, or constant velocity, this is the only, only equation you can use when something has a constant velocity, change in displacement over change in time. It's such a sweet little friendly equation. Lots of students want to use it all the time, and you can't. You can't use it for an accelerated situation. It won't work. Then you have to pick one of these. But this works for a constant velocity situation, or if you want to find average velocity, average velocity is going to be the same equation with a little hat over the V, the change in displacement, and the time it takes for that motion to occur. But that's going to give you average, or if you just use it straight, the constant velocity. Now we are going to go over to an example problem. And let's try this. I'm going to pick a pen so I can write, and here goes. A car accelerates along a straight road from rest at a rate of 4.2 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. What is the final velocity of the car? Okay, now when you are faced with a kinematics problem like this, the very first thing you do is write down what you know. So what do I know? A car accelerates along a straight road from rest. Watch out for words like from rest, because from rest means the original velocity is zero. Yeah, it's sneaky, isn't it? From rest means original velocity is zero. At a rate of 4.2 meters per second squared. So what is this? Let your units be a big neon sign telling you what's going on. Meters per second squared. So what kind of variable is measured in meters per second squared? 
That's my acceleration for five seconds, and that's my time. The question is, what is the final velocity of the car? So that's VF is my question mark. Please get in the habit of writing down everything you know. Please get in the habit of putting a question mark for the thing you do not know. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is hit pause, go back and look at your list of kinematics equations that you just wrote down, and can you pick out the correct equation to use to solve for this? Do it. Okay, are you back? Which equation did you pick? Well, I would choose VF equals VO plus AT, final velocity equals original plus acceleration times time. Now my original velocity was zero, acceleration is 4.2 meters per second squared, times time of five seconds, this second will cancel one of those seconds. This zero means this whole term goes to zero. And so my final velocity is going to be 4.2 times 5. I'm going to pick up my calculator, 4.2 times 5, and I got 21.0. That should have been three significant digits. And what's the units? Meters over seconds. The problem tells you what units you should use. Okay, all right, the next couple of videos we're going to go through more example problems. See you then.